Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. We welcome you on another Wednesday night Bible study here in the sanctuary of SRC. Uh, we want to encourage you to scoot up a little bit on tonight because we're going to we're going to go a little bit deeper into this on tonight. And so just scoot up a little bit, get your iPhone, your iPad, your Android, whatever device that you may have. Call someone else. Uh, share this message with someone else. And if you're liking it, hit that subscribe button and subscribe to our YouTube channel. We're so glad you're with us tonight. We trust and pray that you've been doing the possible and he will do the impossible. That you would stay saved, sanctified, uh, and sanitized. Glory to God. Glory to God. And safe, of course. We know that. Praise God. But we welcome you back. We're in the 16th chapter. And uh, we're going to, to pick up from where we were left off. And just a few things that I want to say uh, uh, before I begin. And that is... I want to encourage you to read the book of Revelation. So many believers shy away from that book. So many have never read it, uh, but you need to read it. Follow along with us. And, and there's, you know, and I'm, I'm going to, you know what? I'm going to go back to something that we, we were doing in the very beginning when we started teaching. And go just quickly right to the first chapter and look at verse number three, because I want to read this again. I just kind of want to remind you of this. Notice what it says. It says, bless are they what? Who what? Read, listen, blessed are they who read and they which hear the words of the prophecy and keep those things which are written therein. So God pronounces a blessing. So don't shy away from reading the book of Revelation. For all scripture has been given by the inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, reproof, instruction, and correction in righteousness that the man of God, the man, a woman of God may be thoroughly and perfectly furnished into all good works. So read it because God pronounces a blessing upon those who will read, hear, and do. He says, for those things which are written therein, for the time is at hand, which is referring to the beginning of the fulfillment, are you with me, of the things which are, which begins with the church, because that's what John is dealing with, the things which begins with the church as recorded in chapters two and three, and then continues on forever and ever and ever. So I certainly want to encourage you to follow along with us and to read the book of Revelation. So let's go back to the 16th chapter. And in that 16th chapter, the, verse, the first nine verses of that 16th chapter really deals with the, uh, the, the final, it, it talks about the final judgment, when the final judgment will commence. And then verses 10 through 21 deals with the conclusion of, uh, of the final judgment. Because doing during the latter part of the, of, of the Great Tribulation period, it's going to be unparalleled to anything anyone has ever seen or heard before. Are you hearing me? It's going to be totally unparalleled to anything that one has seen or heard before. And keep in mind, these things are literally going to take place. Irrespective of what you may think, what you may believe or don't believe, it's going to actually take place. And then in this 16th chapter, uh, you, you will see the, the ministry of angels being used a lot. Matter of fact, there's probably more so mention about uh, angels and carrying out uh, God's um, judgment than any other time. And, and so uh, in recapitulating just a few of the verses of, in the beginning of that 16th chapter, he says that I heard a great voice out of the temple uh, to the seven angels Go your ways, pour out the vows of the wrath of God upon the earth. And so God's judgment is going to be poured out. In other words, things are going to come to a crescendo, if you will, uh, whereby it, it seems as if, uh, you know, the Bible says, vengeance is mine, saith the Lord, and I will repay. Well, guess what? It's going to take place. Are you hearing me? It is going to take place. And one of the things that I want you to notice that that the old is in the new reveal, the new is in the, the old is in the new reveal, the new is in the old conceal. And some of these judgments has somewhat of a contrast to the the judgments that were upon Egypt. Uh, and, and keep in mind, Pharaoh was a type, if you will, of the Antichrist, in a sense of speaking. Are you hearing me? Pharaoh was a type, if you will, of the Antichrist. And so you will see a contrast, somewhat of a contrast, with the judgments that took place in Egypt 
that's going to take place, listen, in the great tribulation period, but on a much broader scale. In other words, the things that happen in Egypt is nothing compared to what's going to happen during the latter part of the great tribulation period. And, and so you see that the, the judgments of God are being poured out, those, those vowed judgments, those bold judgments that are being poured out upon the earth. And, and as we covered, uh, verse number three, and the second angel poured out his vial into the sea, and it became as blood of a dead man, and every living soul died in the sea. My, 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 my. Uh, every living thing died in the sea. And if you keep in mind, that has some similarity are some contrast to what happened in Egypt as well. And then we get to the fourth verse is really where we left off from on last week. So let's read the fourth verse. And it says, and the third angel poured out his vial upon the rivers and fountains of water. Listen, he's going to pour out, listen, his vial of judgment, listen, upon the rivers and the fountains of water. And notice what it says. And they became what? Blood. Wow. Wow. Wow, they became blood. And, 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 and you, you cannot explain this away. These are events and things that's going to really take place uh, primarily in that geographical la location over there. Are you hearing me? And uh, I mean, there's, there's going to be uh, uh, the, the rivers, the, the water sources and everything. Listen, there's going to be blood in it which is going to, watch this, which you can't even drink. The stench and the smell from it, it's going to be undrinkable. No doubt, probably, uh, water will be uh, some, some means of bringing in fresh water because f for that region, the rivers, listen, the rivers and the fountains, listen, the angel will pour out his vial upon the rivers and the fountains of water, and notice what it says, and they became what? Blood. So throughout that kingdom or throughout that region over there, that's going to be pretty much confined to that general populace over there. Are you with me? And, and it's going to be poured out as a result of God's judgment uh, that's, that's, that's coming. And, and man tends to use bombs and et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, uh, for, 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 for carrying out what they want to carry out. But notice God uses elements. God uses elements, and so that's going to take place. And, and, and notice, the false prophet can't do anything to counter this. If you remember in the Old Testament, remember, Mo, uh, remember uh, Pharaoh's ma magicians and astrologers and so on and so forth? They tried to imitate or duplicate the very things that God used Moses to bring about. Are you hearing me? And, and I want you to know that the false prophets are not going to have any counter for what's going to take place in the Great Tribulation period. Not whatsoever. Uh, uh, over in the book of uh, Habakkuk, uh, it is recorded over in that third chapter that, that um, in, 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 in wrath, God, remember in mercy. During the Great Tribulation period, there is not going to be any mercy. In other words, God's going to take off the gloves. Are you hearing me? I say God is going to take off the gloves. There will be no mercy. Uh, there will be those who, who, uh, who, who, who took the mark of the beast, the forehead and the right hand. Are you hearing me? And who, who blaspheme God. And, and God is a, uh, let me say this. God is a righteous God. He would be unrighteous if he didn't carry out his judgment upon the earth during that time. Are you hearing me? Look at verse 5. It says, and I heard the angel of the waters say, and I heard the angel of the waters say. Uh, we, 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 we see a variety of angels carrying out uh, certain assignments in, in the book of Revelation. And in the book of Revelation, uh, for the most part, it's, it's a book of judgment. God's, God's wrath has reached its peak whereby he's going to uh, uh, release his judgment on the earth. Are you hearing me? And I heard the angel 
of the waters say? What did the angels of the waters say? You are righteous. Listen to this. You are righteous, O Lord. In other words, they are proclaiming that what God is going to do during that time, they're saying, God, it's righteous. Wow. Listen to this. You are righteous, O Lord. Everything that God does is righteous, even in his judgment. I want to say that again. Everything that God does is righteous, even in his judgment. Because if he, if, if, if he didn't, he would not be the God that he say he is. Are you hearing me? So you are righteous, O Lord. And so what he's doing is going to be righteous. It says, which are and was and shall be. That refers to the fact that God doesn't change. He's the same. There's no shadow of his turning. He doesn't change. Are you hearing me? Uh, he says, because, listen to this, because you have judged thus. And, it, and God would be unrighteous if he didn't judge. God is a God of righteous judgment. And what's going to be carried out in, during this time in that season that will take place, listen, it's going to be God's righteous judgment that will be carried out on the earth in that region over there. Are you hearing me? In verse 6, it says, for they have shed the blood of saints and prophets. And this is referring to those in whom the, the Antichrist, listen, who he murdered. Are you hearing me? It, it, it was it, because this is going to be a time of great tribulation. I want to say that again. This is going to be a time of great tribulation. Matter of fact, I, it's recorded over in Matthew 24. Go with me to Matthew 24, and uh, it's, it's, it's familiar to you. And, and I want us to read verse 21. It says, for then shall be great tribulation. In, in other words, the last three and a half years of the great tribulation period is going to be great, and it's going to be so great. Listen at this, what Jesus says. Such as was not since the beginning of the world to this time no nor ever shall be. So in other words, then the worst that the world has ever known is going to take place and happen during that great tribulation period. And I want to say this as well. Uh, some of the little things that we see going on and taking place is somewhat, if you allow me to say this, hear me out, is somewhat of a snippet, a prelude to what will take place on a much larger scale because the little things that are going on with the pandemic and other things that have happened and have taken place, it's nothing to be compared to what's going to take place during the Great Tribulation period. Are you hearing me? And let's go back to the verse 6 of that 16th chapter of Revelation. For they have shed the blood of saints and prophets. My God. And, and again, this is referring to the fact that the Antichrist during the Great Tribulation period and, and, and those who gave their allegiance to the, him, those who, who took the mark on the hand, those who took the mark on the forehead because they gave their allegiance to him, those who blasphemed Christ, those who rejected him. And even, listen, even now in the, in, in the dispensation and the time in which we are living in now, there are many people who are rejecting Christ. Because when they knew him, wow, wow. <laughs> Thank you, Holy Ghost. Go with me to the book of Romans. Glory to God. Uh, uh, chapter 1, because I want to read something out of that, that, that first chapter of, of, of Romans. So go there with me, if you will. Romans chapter 1, and I, there's just a verse or two that I, I want to read in that. Look at verse 21. It says, because that when they knew God, they glorified him not as God. Neither were thankful, but became vain in their imaginations, and their foolish heart was darkened, professing themselves to be wise. Hear this. They became fools and changed the glory of the uncorruptible God into an image made like unto corruptible man, into birds and four-footed beasts and creeping things. 
Wherefore God, hear this, gave them up to uncleanliness through lust of their own hearts to dishonor their own bodies between themselves. Let me tell you something. When you keep rejecting light, light will be withdrawn. When you keep rejecting light, light will be withdrawn. And you will get so deceived and so manipulated. Are you hearing me? My God. And, and you know, as, 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 as I was reading and, and preparing for, for tonight, my, my heart began to ache because there's so many people. L listen, in, just in the last few weeks, uh, I'm constantly hearing about this one passed, that one passed, this one passed, that one passed, this one transitioned, that one transitioned. This one was shot. That, I, listen, listen. And my question is, how many people have left here who know Christ and how many have left here that don't know Christ? My God, my God, my God, my God. And, and, and listen, it has been said that you can be here today and gone tomorrow. No, no, no. You can be here today and gone today. And I, I would not put off tomorrow what I can do today. You may not wake up tomorrow. You may not see tomorrow if, in fact, tomorrow comes. You may not. And you have to, you have to judge yourself and examine yourself and ask yourself, do I have a bona fide relationship with Jesus Christ? Hear me on tonight. Do I? Listen. For they have shed the blood of saints and of prophets. And, in, and if you notice in, in the, the times that we're in now, there's such, uh, not to the degree it is in certain other countries, but, but there, there is an antagonistic attitude and spirit towards believers. Are you hearing me? There is an antagonistic spirit and attitude toward believers. And, 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 and in the Great Tribulation, notice this here. They pledge their allegiance to the Antichrist, to the beast. And, and listen, listen, what, and see, this is, this is God's judgment that's going to be poured out. Now hear this, for they have shed the blood of saints and of prophets, and you have given them blood to drink, for they are worthy. Wow. In other words, listen at this, and you have given them blood to drink, for they are worthy. These, John, he's saying they are worthy of what they're going to get because of their blaspheming God, because of their rejection of him. My God. That, that, listen, that's, that, 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 that causes me to, to uh, and allow me to say this, that, but that, that, that causes me to grieve within because of, so many people who are leaving here on a daily basis and they don't have their priorities in the right place. In other words, they don't know who Jesus Christ is. And, and let me say this on tonight, too. Uh, you know, yesterday morning uh, when I got up to go into one of the rooms to have my time with the Lord, and one of the things that he spoke to my heart that when you finish teaching on the book of Revelation, when you complete this, the Lord spoke to me and said, I want you to start in the book of Genesis because we have a generation of, of people now that, that uh, know nothing about Jesus Christ. Uh, uh, in that the book of Revelation deals with the judgment of God in the book of Genesis, we, we, we have people that are coming along now don't even know if there is such thing as a God. Are you hearing me? And so what, what has happened, uh, uh, people have been deceived. They, they, they haven't been uh, in many circles. They haven't been told the truth. One of the things that Paul, in writing to Timothy, he says, preach the word. We're to preach it in season and out of season. We love people enough to give them truth. We are to love people enough to give them truth. And it's, it, it at least put it out there. And they can do with it what they want to. Because let me tell you something. 
Listen, every since the fall, every since the fall, when sin entered into the world as a result of Adam's uh, 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 rejection, as a result of Adam's disobedience, should I say, unto God, sin has been. So with all of the things that are going on, there's nothing new under the sun whatsoever. There is nothing new. Uh, uh, and, and, but we, we have to love people enough to give people truth irrespective of how they feel about us, what they say about us. Uh, are you hearing me? At least love them enough to give them the truth and, 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 and speak the truth in love. Listen, and speaking the truth in love, love them enough to give them truth, but speak it in love. Because you can tell a person something, but it's how you tell them what you tell them. Are you hearing me? And whether you want to believe it or not, those who reject Christ, there is going to be an eternal damnation awaiting them. But don't tell them like that's where you want them to go. Love people enough to give them truth and give them the truth of God's word in love. And, and, and what is happening in our society today, there are those who, who've been whether it's apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, or teachers who've been called into ministry but who won't cry aloud and spare not, who, who are preaching a secularized gospel, who is, 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 has gone from the sacred, sacred to the secular and don't want to say anything that might be offensive to people. But we have to love people enough to give them the truth. Let's, let's read on. And it says, and you have given them blood to drink, for they are worthy. And then look at verse number seven. I'm, I'm, I'm running out of time, but not out of word. He says, and I heard another out of the altar say, wow, wow, wow. Even so, Lord Almighty, true and righteous are your judgments. Mm. In other words, in other words, this, this is proclaiming the fact that, that the prayers of those at, at the altar who cry for vengeance, their prayers are going to be answered. It is, it is, God's, it is God's judgment reaching a crescendo whereby his wrath is going to be poured out upon, listen, upon that region. And, 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 and no doubt all of this is probably going to be broadcasted through some type of media, uh, uh, television, satellite, whatever means of communication and, and, and televising these events that's going to be taking place in that region where uh, God's wrath is going to be poured out and where the Antichrist, uh, uh, those who rejected God, those who, 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 uh, who accepted the Antichrist, who accepted his mark, and, and so God's, God's judgment is going to come into fruition. No, there's no ifs, ands, or buts about it. Uh, we have it right here in the word of God. And it just comes down to the simple fact, do you believe God's word or not? And, and, and I've always said this many times, what do you have to lose? Think about it. What do you have to lose? What, the, this is true. Whether you accept it or not, it's true. It's not going to change. It is true. It's literally going to happen. But watch this here. What do you have to, to lose by not believing it? What do you have to lose? What do you have to lose? In, in, in other words, if, if you don't believe this is, is, is true, and it is true, guess what? These events are going to take place. These things are going to happen. But my question is, why not accept it and believe it? Because watch this here. If it's not true, guess what? What do you have to lose? God's word is truth. And Jesus said this, you shall know the truth and the truth shall make you free. I trust and pray that you are getting something out of this or have gotten something out of this. And again, those first nine verses, um, it, it, they, it's the, 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 the verses of judgment where God uh, commences his judgment uh, during that time frame. And, and so it is, it, is, it is my prayer that 
that you receive something. I want to encourage you to continue to read and follow along with us. And if you've not subscribed to our YouTube channel, go ahead and subscribe. Take this and share it with others. Amen. Take it and share it with others. Uh, I believe it'll, it'll bless you richly and greatly. And, and, and follow along with us as we continue our study in the book of Revelations because you will get a revelation of God's word, a revelation, no doubt, that you didn't have before. And so, listen, again, I'm out of word. I'm not out of word, just out of time. All right? And we thank you for joining in with us on tonight. And uh, this is Bishop Walker in the sanctuary of SRC. We love you in the Lord. Listen, continue to stay safe. Continue to stay sanctified and sanitized. Are you hearing me? You do the possible. He will do the impossible. Listen, COVID hadn't gone anywhere. It's still here with us. Are you hearing me? And so don't fear it. Respect it and use wisdom in the process. Again, Bishop Walker, we love you in Jesus. Until next time, next week, same time, be blessed in the Lord.